Uh, this is Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under. Um, I would like to talk about one or two things because all of this is weighing very heavily on my heart and I feel that people are kind of to some extent missing the point, although it's anybody's guess where um, where the truth is now. Um, so this is, well, we have the mainstream media talking about uh, Trump, 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 Trump did this, Trump did that. Uh, and then on the other hand, uh, we have this sort of reaction that comes from uh, a video by uh, Luke Rudkowski. For the what a great honor address. to be able to introduce for the first time ever anywhere. That so over the last few days, I've been uh, collecting some uh, material, putting it together. Okay, so a few days ago, I went through um, an article from uh, What Does It Mean? Uh, it's a very eccentric um, website that people love to call fake news and uh, most of the time I don't bother but going through this article they had links um, uh, which I found that they were quite useful and I went through these links and I put them on my blog so I shall uh, put the link for that particular article on the description box below and I think it's really worthwhile going through these, including what I'm about to present. But yesterday also, uh, Hal Turner did, um, and he's another very inconvenient um, sort of person, but he did what I thought was a, as a reasonably good analysis of the situation uh, as it's um, unfolding between um, Azerbaijan and Armenia, and he didn't quite get the historical uh, roots uh, correct. And of course, he betrayed his usual kind of simplistic, you know, he was describing the Armenians as the first Christian nation on the planet, which of course they are. And then he described the uh, Azerbaijanians as, as monkeys. So I can't go along with that. But on the other hand, what he had to say um, was really uh, useful. And in effect, he was saying that this war was part of a strategy that was directed against Russia and designed to stop uh, Russia from having access to, uh, to Iran. And eventually, the policy was to do a nuclear first strike against Russia. Well, I mean, who can say one thing or the other? I think we just need to kind of um, uh, look at the evidence as we have it and just see how things are unfolding. But the story is that you'll never get even a fraction of this, not even a, not even a, a hint of this in the Western mainstream media. Um, so that's why I'm putting this video together. It's not because I'm saying that this is the narrative. This is what's going to happen. It's because I think it's really important uh, for people to have uh, more than one narrative. Um, the other thing, or the third thing, was actually listening to uh, True News uh, today. They did an excellent uh, analysis. Uh, first of all, about Trump uh, the ho having left the hospital and uh, all of those questions. But then they raised the question um, of uh, war and rumours of war. And Rick Wiles um, 
harked back to the uh, Y2K at the end of 1999 when it was assumed uh, that all the computers uh, would uh, break down at the uh, at the end of the uh, century and that uh, the Russians would accidentally release nuclear missiles in that in that case and of course it was um, turned out to not be the case and of course a narrative which came in the first place from governments and from uh, and from the media then became a conspiracy theory that was being sort of peddled by people. Uh, so they just turned the whole thing around. And I think they were saying really that the same thing is, uh, is going on here. Um, that what you've got is smoke and mirrors, uh, just not thinking of the word at the moment. Uh, but a cover-up anyway, a cover story, that's it, uh, with the whole thing with Trump uh, going to the Walter Reed Hospital and everything that goes with it. Um, and of course, there are various narratives that are playing out at the same time. We don't know what's true. And... Uh, we can look at things from a different uh, direction. But I, I think this is really important to know this. Uh, so again, I will leave the, um, the description of their, uh, their broadcast from today. But I'll just go through a, a few slides because uh, I think it's very important that people know this because uh, people tend to suffer greatly from um, from uh, amnesia. Okay, so this is what they were talking about today. Uh, this is from the Wall Street Journal. Oh God, sorry. Uh, and the headline is Joint Chiefs of Staff in Quarantine After Admiral Raises Positive, Test Positive for COVID-19. And then we have a similar headline here from, um, uh, from RT. Uh, Pentagon, US Joint Chiefs of Staff quarantined after Coast Guard Admiral test positive for COVID-19. So I think they're saying that these, the whole of the military um, have uh, disappeared into a bunker. And this was something that uh, I was reporting on uh, this possibility several days ago. So let's just go through some of what they were presenting. So this goes back to March. COVID-19 drives command teams charged with homeland defense into Cheyenne Mountain Bunker. That's in Colorado. And of course, the assumption when we were discussing this back then was that there might be a martial law because of uh, coronavirus. But of course, the, uh, the whole situation has changed. So, and um, then they were talking about here, uh, Newsweek, talking about inside the military's top secret plans if coronavirus cripples uh, the government. So I think that they uh, finally in October, they might be uh, talking in terms of coronavirus crippling the government. Um, and then back at the end of March, administration to use the Defense Production Act for the first time in the coronavirus pandemic. So that's when the government can direct corporations to produce uh, goods that they see as, um, as, uh, as strategic. And jumping to Israel, um, uh, this is in the end of September, uh, Netanyahu is talking about a pre preemptive strike against Iran being still being an option, and of course, several days Haaretz, which is on the on the left, was uh, sort of pointing to a similar situation where Netanyahu might be removed. In very similar terms, really, as Trump. And uh, this 
is something that we never see in the Western media. This come from uh, an, the Eurasian Times. The United States could attack China, seize disputed islands in South Sea Sea. China Sea before the 2020 US elections, say military experts. And as uh, the New York Times, uh, China wraps up a war of words, warning the United States of its red lines. And this is from the South China Morning Post. Uh, at the end of August, the Chinese military rocket force drills prepare for possible United States nuclear weapons attack. And going back to the United States, B-52 bombers in Louisiana are tested for their ability to drop nuclear bombs. And under Trump, we've, uh, I think this originated with him, uh, they've gone back from the uh, mad, the mutually assured destruction to, um, to a nuclear first strike capability and I think the United States is developing kind of more strategic and low-grade nukes rather than into uh, ICBMs. And uh, in the uh, Europe, the United States trains for attack in Central Europe in Austral night drills. That was at the end of uh, September, about a week or so ago. And of course, here the assumption is, of course, it's going to be Russia. And um, the very day that Trump uh, allegedly went into the uh, Walter Reed Hospital, the um, these planes, the uh, Boeing E6B Mercuries, the um, um, the nuclear Armageddon planes. Uh, were flying amid Trump's coronavirus announcement. And of course, Strategic Demand Command said it was purely coincidental. And uh, in Korea, North Korea seen moving into continental ballistic missiles, says a report. So lots of talk of war and rumors of war and uh, quite where the truth lies is anybody's business, but let's please try and, um, and join the dots and not pretend that it's not happening. Uh, finally, I want to talk about an organization called uh, Deagle.com. Um, I did a video uh, with Margot several months ago, uh, we both got sort of shot down in flames for for uh, for mentioning it. Um, but I, the, the, this organisation, I've, I've never quite been able to work out who they are. Uh, but they've done a an update um, to their uh, previous uh, projections. And I just want to read out the uh, the disclaimer that comes underneath. Um, so they say, in 2014, we published a disclaimer about the forecast. In six years, the scenario has changed dramatically. This new disclaimer is meant to single out the situation from 2020 onwards. Take, talking about the United States and the European Union as separated entities no longer make sense. Both are the Western Bloc keeping printing money and will and will share the same fate. After COVID, we can draw two major conclusions. The Western world success model has been built over societies with no resilience that can barely withstand any hardship, even a low intensity one. It was assumed, but we got the full confirmation beyond any doubt. The COVID crisis will be used to extend the life of this dying economic system through the Great uh, Reset. Uh, the Great Reset 
like the climate change, extinction rebellion, planetary crisis, green revolution, shale oil hoaxes, hmm, promoted by the system, is another attempt to slow down dramatically the consumption of natural resources and therefore extend the lifetime of the current system. It can be effective for a while, but finally won't address the bottom line problem and will only delay the inevitable. The core ruling elites hope to stay in power, uh, which is in effect the only thing that really worries them. The collapse of the Western financial system and ultimately the Western civilization has been the major driver in the forecast along with the confluence of crisis with devastating outcome. As COVID has proven, Western societies embracing multiculturalism and extreme liberalism are unable to deal with any real hardship. The Spanish flu one century ago represented the death of 40 to 50 million people. Today the world's population is four times greater with air travel in full swing, which is by definition a super spreader. The death casualties in today's world would represent 160 to 200 million in relative terms, but more likely 300 to 400 million, taking into consideration the air travel factor that did not exist one century ago. So far, the um, the COVID death toll um, is roughly 1 million people. It is quite likely that the economic crisis due to the lockdowns will cause more deaths than the virus worldwide. The Soviet system was less able to deliver goodies to the people than the Western one. Nevertheless, Soviet society was more compact and resilient under an authoritarian regime. That in mind, the collapse of the Soviet system wiped out 10% of the population. The stark reality of diverse and multicultural Western societies is that a collapse will have a toll of 50 to 80%, depending on several factors, but in general terms, the most diverse, multicultural, indebted and wealthy, higher standard of living will suffer suffer the highest uh, toll. The only glue that keeps united such an aberrant collage from falling apart is overconsumption with heavy doses of bottomless degeneracy disguised as virtue. Nevertheless, the widespread censorship, hate laws and contradictory signals mean that even that glue is not working anymore. Not everybody has to die uh, Migration can also play a positive role in this. I'm not sure what that last sentence means. Um, the formerly known as second and third world nations are an unknown at this point. Their fate will depend upon the decisions they take in the future. Western powers are not going to take over them as they did in the past because these countries won't be able to control their own cities, far less likely countries that are far away. If they remain tied to the former world order, they will go down along with Western powers, but won't experience the brutal decline of the latter because they are poorer and not diverse enough, but r rather quite homogenous, used to, deal to with dealing with some form of hardship, but not precisely the one that is coming. If they switch to China, they can get a chance to stabilise, but will depend on the management of their resources. We expected this situation to unfold, and actually it is unfolding right now with the November election triggering a major bomb if Trump is re-elected. If Biden is elected, there will be bad consequences as well. There is a lot of bad blood in the Western societies, and the protests, demonstrations, rioting and looting are the only, only the first symptoms of what is coming. However, a new trend is taking place, overshadowing this one. The situation 
between the three great powers has changed dramatically. The only relevant achievement of the Western powers during the past decade has been the formation of a strategic alliance, both military and economic, between Russia and China. Right now, the potential partnership between Russia and the European Union is dead, with Russia turning definitively towards China. That was, from the beginning, the most likely outcome. Airbus never tried to establish a real partnership, uh, but rather a strategy to fade away the Russian aerospace industry. Actually, Russia and China have formed a new alliance to build a long-haul airliner. Western Europe, not to mention the United States, was never interested in the development of Russia or forming anything other than a master-slave relationship with Russia providing the raw materials and towing the line of the West. Uh, it was clear then, and, is, and today is a fact. Russia has been preparing for a major war since 2008, and China has been increasing her mil military cap capabilities for the last 20 years. Today, China is not a second-tier power compared to the United States. Both in military and economic terms, China is at the same level and in some specific areas are far ahead. In the domain of high-tech 5G, it has been a success in the commercial realm, but the Type 055 destroyer is also another breakthrough with the US gaining a similar capability, DDG-51 flight Four by uh, the middle of this decade, more likely by 2030. Chang, the lead ship of the Type 055 class, was commissioned amid the pandemic and lockdown in China. Uh, six years ago, the likelihood of a major war was tiny. Since then, it has grown steadily and dramatically, and today, is by far the most likely major event in the 2020s. The ultimate conflict can come from two ways. A conventional conflict involving at least two major powers that escalates into an open nuclear war. The second scenario is possible in the 2025 to 2030 time frame. A Russian sneak first a uh, strike against the United States and its allies with the new S-500 strategic missile defences, Yasin M uh, submarines, INF Zircon and Calibre uh, missiles, and some new space asset playing the key role. The sneak first strike would involve all Russian missile strategic forces, branches, bombers and ground-based missiles at the different stages of such an attack that would be strategic translation of what was seen in Syria in November 2015. There was no report that the Russian had such capability of launching a high-precision multiple combined arms attack at targets 2,000 plus kilometres away. Uh, Western intelligence had no clue. The irony is that since the end of the Cold War, the United States has been manoeuvring through NATO to achieve a position to execute a first strike over Russia, and now it seems that the first strike may occur, but the country finished would be the United States. Another particularity of the Western system is that its individuals have been brainwashed to the point that the majority accept their moral high ground and technological edge as a given. This has given rise uh, to the supremacy of the emotional arguments over rational ones, which are ignored or deprecated. That mindset can play a key role in the upcoming catastrophic events. At least in the Soviet system, the silent majority of the people were aware of the fallacies they were fed up with. We can see the United States 
claims about G5 being stolen from them by China or hypersonic technology being stolen by Russia as the evidence that the Western elites are also infected by that hubris. Over the next decade, it will become obvious that the West is falling behind the Russia-China bloc and the Malays might grow into desperation. Going to war might seem a quick and easy solution to uh, restore the lost hegemony to finally find them um, in a France 1940 moment. Back then, France did not have nuclear weapons to turn a defeat into victory. The West might try that swap because the unpleasant prospect of not being Mars and Venus, but rather a bully and his dirty bitch running away in fear while the rest of the world is laughing at them. If there is not a dramatic change, of course the world is going to witness the first nuclear war. The Western Bloc collapse may come before, during or after the war. It does not matter. A nuclear war is a game with billions of casualties and the collapse plays in the hundreds of millions. So there we are.